Recently, the Long Beach Post launched an investigative series called Locked Out. In that series, we investigate the growing homeless population here in Long Beach. We've talked to several different people that are struggling with homelessness, plus the mental, emotional, and physical stress that comes with that. But what happens when residents of a community want a nonprofit organization that is addressing the needs of the unhoused to relocate? And why can't we find common ground on how to address this growing issue? On today's episode of The Word, we are heading out on location and heading over to Christian Outreach in Action. The nonprofit, non denominational organization has been addressing the needs of the unhoused as well as the impoverished community for over 40 years. We're going to find out what they do, what services they provide, and how they overcame the challenges of not being wanted in the community they serve. Dixie Dorman has been the executive director for Christian Outreach in Action for over 20 years, and today she's going to speak with me about why it's so important that the organization stays within the community. But first, we're going to hear from Artie. He has been unhoused for over 10 years, and he briefly spoke with me about why he thinks it's so hard for a lot of people to get off the street and why it's difficult for us as a community to come together Together and address these issues. Sometimes people have certain issues they have to resolve, you know, and, and they don't want to bring it home to the family, you know, it, let it be if it's a drug problem, if it's like a personal social problem, I don't know, whatever it is. But, you know, they like to nip it in the bud, deal with it. So once they come or get settled down, it doesn't reoccur again. That's the worst nightmare, you know. That, I think that keeps people from going forward knowing that it could happen again or that uh, impeding sense of doom that they don't want to do it because they know they'll be back in the same situation again. No, I think people know the difference between right and wrong. You know, I think it's just within, you know, nature people, they want, they want to feel empowered, you know, and, uh, and you know, the, 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 the stereotyping and, and, the, and the different, you know, groups and, you know, just, you know, to, it's just that there isn't a real kind of like unity. Nothing brings the people together. Watch this. this. You are now listening to The Word with Jackie Ray. You are the executive director. I am. How how long have you been the executive director? Almost 20 years. Oh, wow. Yes. So what brought you to Christian Uh, Outreach in Action? I think all the things I've done in my past were leading me to to do this job because mm-hmm. um, I need all the tools and experience that I've, I've done. Um, I've always had a passion for those underserved mm-hmm. and I found this position and um, it just felt right. Yeah. It just felt right, you know. That's hard to come by with a job sometimes. It is. <laughs> I can honestly say I think I have the best job in the entire world. Mm-hmm. You know, I get to see miracles happen every day. I mean, every single day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what's one of your favorite success stories so far? Oh, golly, so many. Um, uh, oh, there, I have a client who came to us living in her car, mm-hmm. unfortunately, and um, we helped her with some of her dental and legal issues, uh, but dental was very big for her, and that stands out in my mind because she never smiled, she, it, she didn't apply for jobs, and so after because we... Because she was self-conscious? Very self-conscious oh, okay. of all those things, mm-hmm. and um, she had a son, and mm-hmm. at that time, I think he was about four or five, mm-hmm. and um, through all the different steps, she, we, uh, we sent her through Long Beach City College, oh. and she went uh, through a certain radiology pro- uh, program, and mm-hmm. we supported her through all that. And today, she works at one of the leading um, hospitals. And um, she um, said all her dreams came true. She had, she uh, rents a house in Lakewood with a fence, and she always said she always wanted to picket fence life. And so there it is. Wow, you know? that I mean, mm-hmm. to go from living yes. in your car to Exactly. That's you know. such a that's such a testimony. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, does definitely. she stay in touch? Oh, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And actually, um, she volunteers for different events. Uh-huh. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So let's go back in time because I know this was started by Jack Jensen. This was. And um, I he said he wanted to be a millionaire by 30. Yes. He had some money, but he also found himself um, an alcoholic and suffering from addiction and then kind of went on this journey. Yes. That led us to here. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, definitely. Um, he was uh, a person that just 
lived life. Mm -hmm. And he was a CPA by uh, education. But he also... Um, he did a, did a variety of things, and he also, by the time he was 30, he was miserable, and mm -hmm. he thought, oh my gosh, I've done all these things that I wanted to happen, I'm just miserable. Again, he was an alcoholic and an addict, and so he kind of went on that journey, as you well put it, um, to find out what, what was this all about, and so he just went arbitrarily to a small church, I think it was Christ Lutheran over on Palo Verde. Didn't, wasn't a member, and he just said, I want to speak to the pastor. And they said, okay. He went in, and the pastor listened to him, and the pastor just said, you know, I really don't have an answer, but I can tell you that if you get out of yourself and be of service and do things for others, you will fill that hole that's mm -hmm. inside. So as he was such an extremist and everything else, he joined the UN. And he was with a, serve, uh, a food program, and he was stationed in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. He worked in a refugee camps in Cambodia and was um, uh, so gratified. And when he actually even adopted a son. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. And when he came back, um, he thought, well, why do I keep going to other places? And uh, when in my neighborhood, in my own community, um, people have very similar issues. Mm -hmm. And so he went over to the a food bank here, the Southern California Food Bank over on San Francisco Street. It's still here. Mm -hmm. It's a federally funded program. And of course, he tried to arrange them, organize them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he just couldn't understand why uh, canned food was and uh, produce was being given to homeless. It just, it just didn't compute. They don't walk around with a a can opener and they have no means to to okay. prepare it. Mm -hmm. So that is really the premise of who we are. And so we went back to that same church that didn't really know him and um, said, I need casseroles, I need food, cooked food. And um, they said, okay, but where? And so he was driving down Third Street and there was a small sign in this building and it said kitchen for rent. Mm. So he rented the kitchen. We started serving at that time dinner, and we've never stopped. And that's 40, almost 42 years ago. Wow. We still serve those same meals. And this is the building. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is the building. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This is the building. We own this building. It's an historic building. We love this building. And he passed away very young age mm -hmm. um, um, from mesothelioma, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. And, and but. He left all this to us. He bought this building and some other um, pieces of property. Yeah. That's when, because usually, you know, when when someone passes away, that's when the fear kind of sets in because you don't know is this business, is this organization going to go away, or what right. safeguards are in place that mm -hmm. we can still operate. Do you know what Excuse safeguards me. he put in place to make sure that this worked? I think he started with a board, and they were mm -hmm. immediately kind of people that heard him what he wanted to do and believe. And he found people who believed the same way that he did, that people needed to be fed. And that's just a basic uh, right that everybody has. Mm -hmm. to, um, and so um, that some of those same board members are still around. Um, we have a core board of 12, and several of them are the original board members, if you can believe that. That's crazy. Uh -huh. And they're very dedicated to keeping that same thing that Jack started, you know. Yeah. And it's what we all believe in. Right, okay. right. And we also believe you don't have to have any, um, go to any services or anything to be fed. It's just a meal mm -hmm. that we give to you. And we also serve breakfast now, seven days a week. Yes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we met a gentleman out, outside who said he was Muslim. Um, mm -hmm. And so he, that was the first thing he said, like, you know, your religion doesn't matter. They, they just definitely want to help. And I think that sometimes when, when it's a religious organization, that's always the first thought is, oh, I have to go and practice, you know, X, whatever faith mm -hmm. it is. Uh -huh. So what would you tell people who think that? Um, that we, I think, we hope that we're an example. Right. That's what our, our goal is, just to be an example. To, this is what we feel you should do, and that's what we believe in. Mm -hmm. And we want to be of help. The, um, in the Bible, it says the poor will always be with us. And so we're here. That's our, that's our purpose. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then everyone who volunteers here is just 
their purpose is to be of help. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a petition that was started by some people downtown. I'm sure you heard about it, too. I did. To move mm -hmm. the Christian Outreach in Action mm -hmm. closer to the multi-service center. And just mm -hmm. for our listeners, that's an area where people can get help with housing, social work, um, even job placement. I found it ironic, though, because on one of their emergency um, organizations, you're on the list. Christian <laughs> Outreach in Action is like one of the like third on the list. To the group of people who started that, you know, and, and I get it because there is a certain... You know, we get I'll, it too. Yeah. We do. Uh -huh. So what would you what would you say to them and in, in wanting this service moved away from their community? Well, first of all, we do understand that and we all work together. One of the things I say is if we weren't here, you think you have problems now, mm. you the problems would be much, much worse. We don't cost anybody any and we hope to, that we're good neighbors and we strive constantly to be good neighbors. Um, during the pandemic, our meals were outside and our food bank was because for health reasons, for the complying with the health department, we never stopped. Mm -hmm. Because when we stop, people don't eat. And um, we even think of that on holidays sometimes or when there's certain days that we could close, somebody's not going to eat. You know, and that's a, that's a kind of a responsibility that we take very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's many levels of um, homeless and everything is so easy to slap just, oh, it's the homeless. It isn't just uh, just that. And we don't serve just the homeless. We serve um, uh, seniors. We serve uh, uh, low uh, people in low education lower in economics you know, uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. and um, so we, we have a multitude of services as mm -hmm. well and um, I do understand their point of view and we've tried to be good neighbors we even have a community cleanup once a month uh, and so um, and we work at keep, keeping our area clean but again this is an urban mm -hmm. downtown and any place in the United States this problem exists it's a national problem right. and you just can't wash it away mm -hmm. and um it, it was interesting so much of that went on and no one ever talked to us i thought that was so interesting oh so the people who started the petition never even no no oh you just okay. heard about it uh -huh. and so then eventually the downtown business alliance um brought it forward and we had just we just presented we each were given three minutes, and that was it, really, mm -hmm. basically. But um, we had every agency from the city came and went through us, you know, everybody from parking our cars to they took pictures of us every day, twice a, twice a day, came around from public works and, you know, get out of, get out of your car. They're taking pictures, you know. So, so considering the work you're doing and how important it is, uh, we met a gentleman outside who, who is unhoused, but he said, you know, one of the things that he noticed, he says he comes here every day, that it's not just the unhoused that are in line. It's people who right. live in the neighborhood who also need food. Mm -hmm. And so when you're providing that kind of service to people and then you see the scrutiny that you come under because people want you to stop, mm -hmm. what, how does that, how do you mentally process that? It's hard, <laughs> but I also just feel they, in my mind, they don't understand. Mm. And sometimes, um, you know, if you don't see it, you don't have to pay attention to it. You know, so if they, we go away, but the mm. problem will still be here. And I think that's, and we can work better. All of us can work better at it. And I think that that's, as a community, we should work together in doing this, you know. But it is a bigger problem. It isn't just downtown Long Beach. Other parts of Long Beach are as well. Right. And they they don't have the services. I mean, um, we're just trying to help, you know. Yeah, you know, and the thing is... It's, it was it very is, discouraging at first, but uh, right. we understand. Right. And mm -hmm. it's, it's you know, I travel a lot, you know, because my mom is in is in Denver. I have family in Dallas. And it's it's so, I think, unnerving to see that it's it's almost you could pick it up as far as how it looks and put it in any city. Yes. Denver looks like this. Dallas looks mm -hmm. like this. St. Louis looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, Houston looks like this. So it's very much, like you said, a nationwide problem. And it's something that I think we all have to understand. It's not just up to the organizations. We, if, we all, if we don't want to see it, we have to figure out a way collectively to 
address it. Yes. How can we... We just can't close our eyes. Exactly. And I think that's kind of what I, a lot of people want. They just don't want to see it. Right. That's know? what I'm saying. Not so, in my backyard kind exactly. of attitude. Yeah. But how do we change that mindset and come together as a people to address this from a place of love and not judgment? I think that educating people, one, and I wish people would be just a little more open to even volunteering, mm -hmm. whether it be not necessarily here, but just anywhere and um, being a part of the solution and not the you know, just creating the problem. You know? You've been working in this mm -hmm. industry, in this field, helping people for 20 years. Mm -hmm. If you could just do one thing that you think would help address the unhoused, not even just the unhoused, but the underserved communities who have to come because they can't afford food. One gentleman we talked to said that he basically eats veg vegetables and fruits. So sometimes he'll just go through and pick oranges off of trees and that's how mm -hmm. he gets food. You know, mm -hmm. while that's a beautiful thing nature wise that we have those, that's right. still heartbreaking to know that that's something you have to resort to. So if you and your 20 years of knowledge mm -hmm. could say, this might not fix everything, but this is the one step that I think we as a collective should take right now. What step would that be? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have a magic wand. I know, right? <laughs> Just, I would. So many people are, oh gosh, they don't realize. They just, they're not educated in regards to um, our clientele. They, you know, and it isn't, there isn't just one definition mm -hmm. for, uh, for homelessness. And it could happen to anyone. And I don't think anybody understands that. Mm -hmm. And maybe they do. And so that's why they're a little more um, wanting it to go away. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I really don't have a one solution. I wish I did. Right. Because uh, um, I would apply it on a minute basis, you know. Because mm -hmm. um, no one grows up in the third grade. What do you want to be when you grow up? Right. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. oh, I think we're going to be homeless. Mm -hmm. They don't. Mm -hmm. And that's where we just need more compassion in our lives. And I put a sign out, but um, I had to take it down. But kindness, practice kindness. You might like it. You don't know until you try it, but you right. might like it. Mm -hmm. And it has long-term ramifications. It does, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So aside from meals, um, what are some of the other services you offer? Uh, we have a clothing bank. Mm -hmm. um, we um, have a legal clinic. We have the only uh, public, that's another thing. We have the only public restroom in downtown Long Beach. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize how valuable that is. And, and we maintain that for, for individuals. Um, we uh, have a diaper giveaway every Friday, and that's a big program for us. And we have a lot of um, community events. Um, upcoming is our huge Christmas party where we actually um, take applications and customize all of the, all everyone's um, desires and um, shop just for them. And then we deliver them all on the 17th of December. It's mm -hmm. really exciting, actually. Um, to see all these people come together and deliver these gifts. We just finished, not even a week ago, um, uh, we did over 400 turkeys in, mm -hmm. in baskets, for, and, and then we delivered another 100 to different seniors in the area, downtown area because they're too heavy for them to carry. Right, right. <laughs> and then we gave up blessing bags of groceries, um, over 450. Um, yeah, so... I think that's a that's a community that we always tend to forget about too because I know we talk so much about our unhoused community mm -hmm. but I know our seniors especially in this economy oh. very fixed income and very fixed income and how, how do you help with that, their difficulties we we really see that part and segment growing and, and more so in the last I'd say in the last year and a half in that people can just barely pay their their rent and it's always been, they've had a set income and their rent has, some people have been long-term residents in this area and, you know, 20 years or above. And all of a sudden they're being, their buildings are being bought and redeveloped and their rents are tripled. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't have enough for food. And so we see them here every day, you know, uh, whether um, they come for a hot meal or they, we have a special, they can come for a food bank, but we have a special day just for them because it's slower, um, not as many people, and mm -hmm. we can help them, you know, and if we have to, we'll take it to their house. Right. You know? So 
our legal clinic um, is very popular with them as well. Yeah. They don't know how to deal with their rental situation. And so they make an appointment. And we have an incredible lawyer who's dedicated to, um, he retired five years ago and started this, something he always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And he sees it all across the board. It isn't just one type of um, uh, law. We have a, a program where, where people do luckily get off the street that we provide furnishings and mm -hmm. we have a warehouse where we um, um, basic uh, household goods and things that so help them get that you know. We're just here to really just offer a hand up not a hand out just a hand up and sometimes that's all you need you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much to Executive Director Dixie Dorman for joining me on today's episode of The Word and I have to say I agree. I think volunteering and getting to know people is the best way to not only invoke empathy but it might even be the best way to get that magic wand idea that helps us turn the corner on this issue. So if you'd like to get involved or learn more about Christian Outreach and Action you can visit them online at coalongbeach.org Again that's coa longbeach.org. If you are in need, the food bank runs every day from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And the address for Christian Outreach and Action is 515 East 3rd Street. Again, that's 515 East 3rd Street. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's episode of The Word. I'm Jackie Ray. And remember, if you have to speak a word, make it a good one. Watch this. This, 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 this.